<laughs> it's 420 somewhere and I got to talk to the Waldos, the original creators of the term 420. And I got five facts about 420 you probably didn't know before. So the Waldos loved weed and that's why you came up with 420? We were mm -hmm. always motivated guys that wanted to seek adventure and we just enhanced that. And you know, we used to love going on what we called safaris. Uh, yes. We were so bored with the uh, jock scene, so we'd okay. meet up and we'd go on these safaris and go out and meet weird and interesting people and go to all these adventurous places and we get high while we're doing it. I wasn't using it any particular way. I could, I know that I couldn't because back in those days, you didn't know what you're getting every day. I mean, you didn't walk into a dispensary where they tell you it's a certain strain or it's a certain potency. Every single batch you get, it's something, it could be something completely different. Russian roulette. So getting high, going on adventures and coming up with 420, right? Uh, one day we were on our high school campus and a buddy comes up to me and he's got a map. He's unfolding a map. He goes, hey, my brother's in the Coast Guard. We're growing some pot. And they, for some reason, they thought that they were, their commanding officer was going to bust them. They didn't want to get busted, so they decided to give up the patch and said, hey, here's a map. He gives you permission to go just pick it as you guys want. So we decided to meet at the statue of Louis Pasteur at 420. It's a time, originated as a time, to get high and go look for this pot pad. The first day we went out there, we got high at the, the statue of Louis Pasteur. And after that, we'd say, you know, we'd see each other in the halls. We'd say 420 Louis. That meant we were going to meet that day to go out and get, you know, get high and then look for the marijuana patch. And so that evolved for several weeks uh, doing that. We never found the patch, but we discovered we had a secret term we could use in front of our parents, cops, teachers, and nobody knew what we were talking about. So we had uh, a little something to go along with our safaris. Uh, by creating that term and we didn't realize we were creating history at the time we were just uh, creating a little secret term and having fun my favorite secret term for sure but why 420 why not 415 well it was just a time after school that we could all meet because all of us had different activities after school steve was studying some of the guys were uh playing uh on the football team so uh when they did have football practice it was generally approximately an hour so okay. that just worked oh, out perfect sense. and how did 420 spread all over the world there were connections between with dave and mark into the band called the grateful dead uh, my brother pat was uh phil lex's good buddy the okay, bassist yeah, for the grateful sense. dead phil had they took a hiatus in 1975 phil hired my brother pat to be his manager for a couple of the side bands and Pat hired me to be a roadie. So I was getting high backstage with guys like David Crosby and Phil Lesh, Terry Haggerty. That filtered through the dead community and the roadies and uh, then it just started spreading. And also Mark, uh, his dad was a realtor for the dead and he- you Find know, places right. to rehearse, places to store their equipment. There was always, and when they made money, he would find, you know, he'd find them the homes in the hills here and then We'd be able to babysit their houses and take care of their pets, you know, when they're going out on tour. So well, that, that's one of the ways it spread through the culture. And do you still get high? Oh yeah, we, we still get high, but it's not like when we're in high school, you know. Of we, course. And what strains did you smoke in high school? It was mostly well. sativa back then, you know, it was Mexican strains, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, Oaxacan and uh, Colombian gold. Now, Colombian gold was really strong back then, you know, because we got a lot of dirt weed back then. It was, you know, seeds and stems. And uh, so you never knew what you're getting until, you know, about the mid 70s. That's when the uh, Hawaiian weed started coming in. You know, Maui, Wowie and those strains. And that's when it started getting really strong. But in the early 70s, when we were smoking, it may not have been as strong, but we made up for that by smoking copious amounts. <laughs> you look like you're in a photo booth, doesn't you, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my studio is gone for now, but yeah, I'm I'm happy. At least I am on the go. I'm and I do grow. Wait, I can like show wait that what over here. That's my grow box. You see that? This thing here. Uh -huh. Right. Can we get some? <laughs> yes.
Of course, I will hook you up 100%. Please afterwards send me an email with your addresses and 100% I will send you some seeds if you want to. And then you can make a patch and you can draw me a map um, and send it to me and I will try to find it, no? <laughs> It'll be too high to ever find it like we were. Absolutely, 100%. Thank you so much, guys. And always remember, it's 420 somewhere. Happy 420. All right, happy 420. Okay. Happy 420. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. That's us.